Hi, Mikael. Hello. It's been a significant few days in the title race. How do you feel about Arsenal's chances now with four matches left to play? Now we are there. Uh, that uh, we have to look at ourselves and, and try to perform the best possible way, win our matches and, uh, and wait to see what happens. And uh, that's what we discuss. Sounds a bit repetitive, but uh, it's what we have to do. Do you see it as a two-horse race now between yourselves and Manchester City? I don't think so. I think this league is tremendously demanding and, um, and it can be still a lot of turns. And, um, and we all know how difficult it is to win games in this league. April has sometimes been a difficult month for Arsenal in the last few years, but how much can you take from the way your side has responded to adversity this month? Yeah, it's been great. Um, not only the results, but the performances as well. And we had a big one again uh, in the last London derby against Chelsea. And uh, now we have a, a big one now that I'm sure we're going to have to do it. We want to beat um, Express as well. And you've virtually got everybody available for selection at the moment. So how much tougher and more resilient are this group, both mentally and physically, than in previous seasons? Yeah, availability, we mentioned that before, there was going to be something key. Uh, it's true, apart from Julian, that is going to be very close, that we have everybody available. And uh, that's a huge boost um, that uh, elevates the, the training session, the, the competition between the players, and, and the alternatives as well to, to pick the right lineup, to change the game. So it's something really important. And how much excitement does that give you, the growth in this side? Both towards the end of this season, but also looking ahead to the next few campaigns. Yeah, obviously we are fully focused on this one because it's still a lot of a stake and, uh, and we really want to get the job done. And, um, and we know as well that obviously it's a, it's a very young team uh, with a really bright future and, and still a lot of room for improvement and we will try to keep developing it. And on Tuesday night you said what your side has done physically has been unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You've played four times since Tottenham's last match. How much of a factor do you think that could be on Sunday? Well, for sure we're going to be fully ready, so so we have uh, a bit of time as well to to recover and to prepare from the Chelsea game, and, and I'm sure the team is going to be fully ready to go again on Sunday. And finally, was yesterday's performance from Manchester City just a further indication that you do need to be perfect between now and the end of the season to give yourselves a chance? It's another game, and, and uh, that they managed to win in a, in a convincing way, and uh, something that we cannot control, so let's do what we have to do. Anita from the Premier League. Hi, Mikael. Hi. Um, you were talking about the fact that nearly all your players are all fit. How, how much of a selection headache is it for you right now, especially when we see the likes of Partey coming back and performing so well the way he did against Chelsea, and then mm. Trossard, another player, for example? It's good headaches, though. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you feel for the players because as well I see how much they want it and uh, and how much everyone wants to start and contribute to a team and impact the team in the right way. So it is always difficult. Um, it's part of the job, uh, but as well they're fully ready to to come on the pitch in whenever time that um, that we need them uh, to try to help us to win matches. And uh, the spirit is is so good. The North London Derby. You know how important this game is to fans. How does it compare preparing? compared preparing for this game as a manager compared to when you were a player? More motivation, if anything, because uh, you know what you you can give to your people, uh, which is a lot of joy and happiness if, if we manage to win the game. And uh, on obviously when you have the chance to do that and that's in your hand, you really want to make the most of it to try to make it happen. And how do you find Postacoglu is adjusting to the league? He's been very clear about his style of play, mm. not deviating from that. Yeah, really impressive with what he's done. I'm not surprised because I know him. He was in the Australian national team when he was in Japan as well. I follow him when he was a Celtic. And he's always been um, super clear mm. with a really um, clear direction and identity of how his teams play. And, and I love the way his teams play. So I think he's been very good. And just finally going into this game, how are you seeing the players? Again, I mentioned just how important this game is, not just for the fans because of the, what's online for the North London derby, but for the title as a whole. Enjoying the moment, try, try to, to navigate through this in a, in a natural way. Um, they are super competitive at the moment, everything we do in the training session, they just want to compete, compete and compete. And it's a really good sign because uh, we know what uh, what we're going to have to do. We're going to win it, and um, and that's it. And we have to raise the ball every day in training to to try to match that. Uh, so when we get two games, we are ready. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you. Ian talks more.
Hi, Vicko. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, beginning of the season when you brought in Declan Rice, I think everybody thought that was a really good piece of the puzzle to, to fit into Arsenal. They were less sure about Kai Havertz, but I think we've all been won over now this season with what he's done for you. Just explain for us how much of that was, was your decision and how much of that you knew he would come good for you. Yeah, it's never my decision, it's our decision. Uh, we made the decision super aligned with with the club vision and then obviously in the sporting side. Um, Edwin and myself, we make all the recommendations. There is a lot of people very important and you, know, you need the ownership as well to back you and um, and uh, and then make things happen. But uh, we're very convinced that um, there were characters first, there were players with the right qualities to fit in our model, in our club. And uh, sometimes it takes a bit of time. It's inevitable. Sometimes you're going to make mistakes. Uh, I try to minimize them and, and try to at least generate the environment and um, and everything that the players need to fulfill their potential. You mentioned the owners backing you, believing in your process. You've got a young <coughs> squad here. You've built this young squad. No one handed it to you. You've, you've gone out and built it. It's a squad that challenged last year. It's challenging this year. We'll see whether you win it this year. It's a squad that's been a challenge for a while to come, isn't it? I hope so, but that's something that you have to you have to show um, every season, every game, and in this league, that's extremely difficult to do. To do it two day, two two years in a row, we're not satisfied with that. We want to win it, and we're going to make everything that we can to win it. And and if we do win it, we will try again to win it. And if we don't, for sure we'll try again. And if you don't win it, it's still progress, right, this season. I'm not thinking about that at the moment. I'm just thinking how we're going to win it. <laughs> and finally, how do you view the supercomputer, which has you at 26.6% to win it? I don't know what to say. Hopefully, we can tweak that computer and <laughs> and, and make it a bit higher. Uh, maybe he needs to upload the software. Maybe we need to help him to upload the software uh, or give him more tools. Um, hopefully, we can change that. Good luck. Oh, that's athletic. Hi, Michael. Um, a couple of phrases you've used quite often is uh, being vertical and ball speed throughout the season. I was just wondering why you find those uh, aspects so important and do they go hand in hand or are they two separate things? Well, depending on the moment of, of the face of play, certainly, and, and, and the behavior of the opponent is all about that. It's all about what the opponent is trying to do. Uh, how can you hurt them? Uh, where the spaces are, and uh, and identify those moments to to punish the opponents. But uh, every game is different. Obviously, there are a lot of concepts and, and ideas around um, any way of playing, and uh, for us, these two um, are important. But there are many others, obviously. And we saw them both against Chelsea. Do you know? Can you get a sense of? Okay, I'm going to see that today from the players, or you, are you like us? You just kind of find out when everyone else finds out? Well, there are certain th games that you imagine the type of game you're going to play and try to to explain to the players this is what I think is going to happen, this I think why this is going to happen, this is how we can provoke this happening as well. And then it's about um, trying to, to make make it happen and and then use it. Mark PA? Um, um, Hi. Two years ago, December time of the season, excuse me, a bit more, um, you went to Spurs chasing top four and lost 3-0. I just wondered for you personally, was that one of the hardest nights of your managerial career so far? And what did you learn about that, about you and your team that night? My memory is failing. I was more focused on the one of last year, much more positive. <laughs> Do you think that, that, that game two years ago, you, you have a different core of players now? Do you, do you trust this team almost more than you did back then to be able to deliver in the big moments? We've already seen uh, it this season, I suppose. Haven't we? I have always trusted my players, um, and uh, and then from there you can perform. I can get right or wrong decision as well to help the team in to win or not win in the best possible way. Um, it was a very particular match for many situations, that one as well. But uh, uh, certainly, of course, um, we learn, we try to evolve from there, um, we try to get a squad that is better equipped. Uh, we all had experiences as well that hopefully has helped us to develop and and be better and. Um, and on Sunday, we'll have to to show it again. Simon Standard. Mikel, Hi. it's 20 years to the week since the Invincibles went to White Hart Lane and got a result that won them the league. How much do you draw on that as inspiration when you're going into a derby like this? 
Well, I understand that, but that's not going to happen mathematically, uh, even if we do win it. Um, but there are moments, obviously, that are very important in, in our history, and uh, and I'm sure that a lot of players know about it, certainly the staff and the ones that have been here long enough know about it, and uh, it's about making our own history now. You were saying about the team being fully ready for, for the game. Do you think with Spurs you might have an advantage the fact they've had two weeks off, whereas you guys are in that <coughs> rhythm of playing every three, four days? I don't know. Um, what I can tell you is that uh, the boys are going to be fully ready uh, on Sunday to go to play uh, against a great opponent. That's going to make uh, things very difficult for us and um, are going to have to be very good to beat them. Just lastly, is, is Urien available for selection in the squad? Obviously, he played on, on Monday night. Could he be available for Sunday? Uh, we're going to have to make that decision tomorrow after the training session. Uh, it's very close. I don't know if he's going to come a bit too early this one, but it's very close, I would say. James ESPN. Hi, Miguel. Hi. Just following on from Simon, it's Tottenham have had 15 days off. At, at this stage of the season, are you surprised that the fixture list can throw up such a disparity because you played four times, mm. four games at that time? Yes, but we knew that uh, that, that happened. It, it, they, they weren't the only team as well because of the circumstances and the schedule. Uh, a few teams have to go through a few a few days without a game. Um, it can go either way. I don't know what is the best way to do it. It's what it is, and uh, what we can do is prepare to be fully ready on Sunday. You, would you, okay, different way of asking it, would you rather have played four times, or would you rather have had two weeks off before this game? I love the fact that we played four times, and then we had uh, some great experience, a really demanding week. Uh, we managed to have some really good results in the last two, and obviously that boosted the confidence and the belief of everybody, and we are in a good place. A lot's made of, of Ange Ball, they call it, the, the Postacoglu approach at Tottenham and how attacking it is. Are you expecting an open game on Sunday or do you think they might tweak it a little bit out of respect for you and, and your team? Well, I don't know. Um, I don't know what they would do. I mean, they haven't changed much. I think um, they've been very, very consistent. I think that's been probably the biggest strength as well in, in what they've done. So. Um, you have to be prepared, and then in games things can change, and, uh, and you have to be able to, to tweak things if necessary. And just finally, from me, um, the players that you've signed recently, Kai Havertz and Jorginho from Chelsea, Declan Rice from Tottenham, to, uh, from West Ham, two clubs that don't have a great relationship with Tottenham. How much can that help you and, and help the players understand the, the hostile atmosphere that they're going into on, on Sunday? Yeah, we know, but um, I think it's an unbelievable atmosphere. It's a, it's a beautiful stadium. We played there a few times already, and, and it's a great atmosphere to play football. We know about the, the rivalry, but I think you have to put that aside. You have to leave the game with the intensity and the passion that uh, that demands it, that's for sure. And, uh, and on top of that, we know what we're playing for. So I don't think we need um, anything special uh, because the game has got everything that you need as a player to, to go and enjoy it. Kaya Football London. Hi, Miguel. Hi. Uh, you can officially finish above Spurs if you beat them at the weekend. I think even if you get a draw as well. For so long in the past, and when you were playing as well, Arsenal finishing above Spurs was one of the high points of the season and such a massive thing. But no one's really talking about it now. Is, is that progress? Is that a sign of how much you've progressed in your time in charge? I don't know, but I think we have to look at ourselves and, and what we want to achieve and what our goals are and, um, and then evaluate that and, and obviously you have to put that in the context of a league and a lot of clubs and teams that are super strong and make make it really difficult for you but I think that evaluation has to be um, related more about okay what we've done what we've done right what we can Im still improve and and then make certain decisions in relation to that. But you can also qualify for Champions League the second consecutive season at the weekend again that's something that no one's really talking about but do you almost have to stop and think wow this is really good pros for the club and then when you look back on that you take a great sense of pride in the fact that no one's really talking about it, everyone's talking about the title and the standards of a really risky. Yeah, we have to do it first and and once we do it I think I think it's important to to mention it and and remember it and um, and then go to the next one.